Business Live. Here's Jay Karen and Don Ray. It is Friday, May something. <laughs> what is it, Don? It's May 29th. May 29th, 29th. 2020. Welcome to uh, Golf Business Live Friday edition. Uh, I'm Jay Karen, CEO of the National Golf Course Owners Association. And as always, I have with me Mr. Don Ray, owner of Augusta Ranch Golf Club in Mesa, Arizona, board member of NGCOA, former board member of the PGA of America. And I, I, I don't mind saying candidate for secretary of the PGA of America as well right now. We're not going to get into the political discussions, but, you know, just want to remind our viewers that uh, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a real big wig with us today. And, he's kind of, and we're proud of him. Um, <laughs> all, right, all right. Well, that being said, I have to say something. We have to change the music. I cannot be associated with this show. All right, this is what I'm going to challenge the staff of the NGCOA, our tremendous production crew, whoever our guest is. The song, like Paul Schaefer used to do with David Letterman, they have to pick a song that tells everybody, oh, I wonder who they're talking about today. So mm -hmm. whether it's Jaworski, it's Alyssa, whoever it might be, they're challenged with picking a song that will play on the intro that that yeah. will remind them of our guests or what they do or what they focus on. All look right. At, That's look the at you. Look at you demonstrating leadership. Wow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I threaten to walk out. I threaten to walk out unless I get my way. Is that leadership? I don't know. I don't know. I, oh, no, that's good. I like it. We need to turn this thing into a happy hour. I just got a great bottle yes. of bourbon last night. A buddy of mine owns a restaurant and he, and he, uh, he got me a bottle of Blanton's, which is not easy to find. And so we got to turn this into a happy hour, right? I mean, that's, that's what I'm thinking. You know, what's funny is I've been trying non-alcoholic beers lately um, just to, you know, get out there because I enjoy the taste of beer and I don't want to drink too much. I mean, this COVID thing, pretty soon you're having a beer every night when you go home. I, I mean, you could get a little sideways. And, and so I said, you know, I'm going to start drinking some N.A. beer. There is actually some good N.A. beer out there, believe it or not. My, my college buddies are like, are you kidding me, Don? What are you talking about? I'm telling you right now, St. Pauli girl, they got a nice N.A. beer. It's very tasty. And, and you don't you can drink as many as you want. Unless you're worried about your waistline. Hey, you know what? Do what do what you need to do. I eat, you know, I eat, I eat, uh, I I use Splend in my coffee. It tastes great, you know. It's like it's not sugar. I don't have the calories. So I get it. I get it. I'm with you. Okay. Well, hey, listen, everybody at home. Just a reminder: we have a Q and A module here in Zoom, and that's what we use to uh, field your questions. Uh, and we'll have a we're gonna have a guest today that I'll mention in a moment. So be, you know, be prepared for your questions uh, with for me or for Don or for Alyssa. Um, and, uh, and we have staff standing by to answer any, um, any technical questions or, or things that, that you need someone to pay attention to. So, all right, you know, today we'll have with us, we'll bring on the show a little bit later, uh, Alyssa Godet, who's the founder of Women's Golf Day. We, you know, NGCOA has been a partner of this program for a number of years now. So we look forward to hearing about this crazy year and, and what she's had to do with the, with the program. And, uh, you know, I want to ask her a few questions about it. Um, and so uh, hopefully we'll have some questions from our viewers as well as you, Don. But um, all right. So, you know what, as we do every week, just kick off saying, tell us what's happening in Mesa, right? You know, where the rubber hits the road, the golf course operations. Yeah, you know, and I'm sure, you know, some of our East Coast viewers are thinking, well, how is that relevant? Well, I really do think since we never closed, um, we were kind of, you know, fixing the plane while it was flying. And so certainly wherever you're at right now in the nation, maybe you're Maine and everything just opened up, you're going to get to where I'm at right now. And you're going to face what I'm facing right now. Now you've, you've got your pool noodles, you've got your rakes off the golf course, you've got your ball washers, but you are going to get to where I'm at now. And where I'm at now, Jay, is a very cavalier attitude of the guests of saying that this is over. And there's still some people out there saying it's not over. Um, where's your mask? I actually just got an email. The first one since COVID hit mid-March, at least, you know, where it really impacted the play I had here at Augusta Ranch, where a doctor played the golf course and wanted to know why our golf shop staff wasn't wearing a mask. Um, mm -hmm. We've made it, we've made it uh, a decision of the staff member. We, we provide masks for guests and for our staff, but we don't require them to wear them. And, and this doctor, and he, and he was a doctor, um, really felt like it was uh, necessary for us to wear a mask. And so interesting. And I, I'll tell you, also, too, there is some light at the end of the tunnel for some of you. Uh, Memorial Day, 226 rounds here at Augusta Ranch. I haven't smelled over 200 rounds in May, ever, in 20 years that this golf course has been open because I looked up the records. We've never had a Memorial Day with that many rounds. May is going to be the busiest May in the history of the golf course. So are those all people who always play golf? No. There are people who haven't played for a while. There's people who haven't played at all, and they're back. And so... Um, you know, I guess my biggest disappointment was I, I watched the match. Obviously, we'll probably talk about what Harvey said about the match. 
I wish there would have been a commercial, some PSA type of commercial to the 6 million people who are watching it who can't be all golfers saying how golf is socially distanced, how we're all about family and fitness and 10,000 steps and 2,000 calories and, and, and being outside. I mean, I hope we don't miss this as an industry to do commercials during the colonial. Uh, we missed it on Sunday. We missed it and, and we can't miss anymore because we need people to see it now. Well, we sometimes are the only game in town um, that golf is is the answer for families and for women to bring their families out. So uh, really interested to see, uh, I talked to Alyssa today and, and see what she thinks the opportunity is. But that's really it. I bought a mower. I don't know why those things are 35000 I still can't. I mean, I know John Deere's probably watching, but I just, uh, <laughs> you know, still going about business. Katie had surgery yesterday. So I was dad. I was dad all day yesterday, right? So it's not GM dad or owner dad. It was dad dad. Um, and you know, and all of a sudden things come into perspective really quickly when you when your daughter's, uh, uh, you know, in surgery. So, hey, it's tough out there right now. But I can tell you from the land of the free out here in Arizona, there is light on the other side, even though that light might be 115 degrees right now. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're having to under normal circumstances we're we're managing the middle in our lives, like the typical situations. But this doctor, you know, points out a. You know, the fact I think we're trying to manage extremes right now, and that's really tough and exhausting. You know, you got you know people who are saying must wear masks, don't go out, and and folks saying no, open up, you know, and so forth. And then you have the feelings of of guilt that you know compared to other businesses in the sense of I'm open and I'm and I'm flourishing while others are barely hanging on or dying in their business and and having to manage these extremes you know, just psychologically is exhausting for a lot of people, I think. And so I think that, that's when we see emotions get high. And uh, the, the best operators are going to be able to expect that emotions will be high for a while until, again, until there's a, a vaccine. We, we have to be good at managing the extremes, I think. And maybe, maybe that's another you know, maybe there's a conference session coming up, or maybe we bring on a guest. Maybe we should bring on psychologists and social, you know, scientists to talk about kind of what's happening that, that can make us better managers and owners and, and bosses and, and everything. Just, you know, because in the golf, as you know, Don, it's very esoteric here. We're, we're a little bit of an echo chamber. We talk amongst each other a lot. We need to start bringing in these outside experts maybe to provide us with some insight. And so... Maybe maybe that'll that'll be the, some of the summer sessions here for Golf Business Live. will bring in some some folks to have some meaningful discussions around how we do better, right? I think that's an excellent idea. You know, the language we use can project a certain perception to our guests and to our staff. I mean, Alyssa would probably know if I say guys or I say the PJ is a fraternal organization. All of a sudden, I'm leading on to once this male dominant language, which even though I. I I'm not going to discriminate against anybody. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, right, uh, with everybody who's playing Augusta Ranch, but just the terminology I use. Um, I know that PJ's looked at, are we saying safer? Or are we saying responsible? I mean, what are, what are the terms we're using? So, yeah, if somebody could come on and tell us what language to use that wouldn't offend somebody because everybody's a little bit, even before COVID, they were getting very sensitive to things. But can I use the language that when I respond to this doctor's email, that I'm not painting myself in a corner by the terms I use that that sound like I'm insensitive to his concerns as a doctor and as an elderly man who just wants to play a golf course in a safe fashion. So I think you're right, Jay, if we could if we could learn some of that lexicon, that'll make uh, all of us feel a little more comfortable and those that we don't know, because we don't know what's going on. So, you know, once again, I came from here and I go to the doctor, you know, to go get Katie from the surgery. Karen was only allowed in the room. I was we weren't even able to tap out and change. So I, I couldn't go everybody's got a mask on there. I look at that place and it's COVID central in a sense. Everybody's hypersensitive. I'm at the golf course and I got to get my stick out still. So um, you're right. We're, we're being insensitive out here where we're in front of it. And we got to remember that back East, they're in the middle of it. And we all need to recognize that in the language we choose to use. Yeah. You know, uh, other, other interesting juxtapositions happening this week in the industry. We'll get to the match in a second, but like, you know, the uh, read exhibitions, uh, the PGA, you know, uh, um, golf shows they they canceled the vegas um uh fashion and demo experience right and and then i i'm learning that golf inc is putting on their conference just a few weeks later uh they're going to try attempt for an in-person meeting and so it's like ah you know what, what's what's the right decision here uh to make and so much financially is on the line 
And we're still, you know, we're still in this place where without, again, without a vaccine, nobody really knows exactly how to do the event business and, and what's happening. And, and I, I mentioned uh, at some point uh, the organization that I belong to, which is ASAE, the American Society of Association Executives, they have a meeting scheduled in Vegas in August and they canceled the meeting. Uh, and this is a huge, thousands of people, you know, association executives coming. And I think the city felt we, ju- we cannot pull off a safe, we, a safe event for all of these association professionals coming to town. And so it got canceled. So, you know, um, that's tough. It's, it's tough. We're, we're managing these extremes of do you or don't you. Um, but let's talk, let's talk about the match real quick. Uh, yeah, Harvey, our, our good friend Harvey Silverman wrote an op-ed piece in Golf Business Weekly. And, you know, I think everybody will agree that, that this being the first major sporting event, uh, you know, live sporting event uh, yeah, that drew, what, six million people. Uh, although there was a match the week before, you know, with uh, the, this, the Skins game, but this was the biggie, obviously. And, you know, Har- it, everybody loves it. I mean, we're glad that it's golf. And it, and it shows, you know, what a wonderful game and sport that we have. You know, celebrity, best celebrities on the planet, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the talking, you know, and the ribbing, everything. It was great. It was great. But, you know, Harvey makes the case just as you, you did in this sense of, you know, we, 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 we whiffed, you know, here on an opportunity to have the players themselves. The case he's making is, is the players themselves should have been demonstrating more of the, the practices people want to see the social distancing, like the big check that they all stood behind. They were within two feet of each other and, you know, should they have had masks on uh, just to at least visually show, hey, we're all in this together. Even a Tom Brady, you know, will, will put on the mask and all of these things. You know, there were, there were some breaches during the, the game. They got close to each other and what have you on the tee boxes. So, you know, he was lamenting that we, we could have done, you know, we, meaning those folks, those that put on the, the match, they could have done better to exemplify golf you know, that to do it right. And, and what, what do you, so do you feel like it was a miss? Do you feel like it, you know, people, I didn't see any criticism in the media about it. You know, I don't know about you, um, but uh, what's your take on, on Harvey's um, perspective? Well, it, yeah, I, the whiff was just no PSA type commercials telling these 6 million people that golf is something they should be doing because it's, we're social distancing. I, I disagree with Harvey a little bit. I'm sure he's not surprised to hear that. I, I mean, I do think that I thought it was kind of neat when Phil and Tom had that awkward kind of, are we going to do a high five? He made the eagle putt. They're so excited. The momentum's changing in the match. And and he went in and, and Phil blocked him. And, you know, and then there was that moment when is Tiger going to use Phil's tee? And there was this moment of like, don't use the tee. And in my mind, I'm thinking, please don't use the same tee. Please don't use the same tee because everybody's going to say, he shouldn't have used the same tee. But you know what? We're all trying to figure this out. And Florida is different than other parts of the United States. I mean, I can have 10 ladies sitting at a table right now in my restaurant eating together well within four feet, well within two feet. And that's perfectly legal here in the state. So granted, I know what Harvey's saying, but if they're abiding by the laws of Florida, then they did just fine of, of being four people close to together because they could eat at the same table. Now, I'm not sure about Florida, but in Arizona, why not do a check presentation standing next to each other? Because we can go share a beer in the restaurant sitting at the same table. So I think um, I would love the, the, what was going on with Tiger. I mean, with uh, Phil and Tom reading the putts, talking about pace. I see something there. I see something that'd be a really cool show of maybe tour players or PGA professionals with first responders and walking them through a pro-am. That's the beauty of a pro-am um, is that the professional, actually you get a whole lesson for five hours of how to play golf instead of how to swing golf. And so, Overall, tremendous win. I think it was uh, something that was really exciting. Everybody I know really enjoyed it. A couple things we could have done better, um, and, and I'm sure they will. But at the end of the day, they pulled together this match that was live, and it yeah. was fun, and, and it was golf. You know, Brady and Barkley, you know, that, that, stuff's, that stuff's awesome when he dunks it, you know, for birdie from the fairway. So how do you not like that? Because that's what we all like about golf. Guys spinning and gals spending time together the interplay of the talk. Right. And so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, even when it's raining, even oh, when so it's raining, you have fun. A couple things on that. My first, my perspective. One is I love seeing them in a golf car just by themselves driving like the right, you know, like we all do. Right. That's kind of a cool thing. And I even like the, the uh, skins match the, the week before they're carrying their own bags. I mean that I, you know, and I love caddies, you know, that, you know, we're all in this together, but just those images, you know, reminds folks why fans are so connected to the athletes more than professional football, baseball, and all this, because we feel like 
that we, we step onto a hole, we could, we could do as well in this hole as Tiger could this day, you know, and you can't, but nobody can feel like I can throw a football like Tom Brady, you know? So I like, I like that, the imagery, that connectivity. I'll argue this as well. I mean, you, you said, you, you said guys and gals, you know, in this, in this whole gender discussion that happens a lot in these discussions, like we say guys, oh, and gals, you know, we, we, we do that a lot in, in golf because we're trying, but someone made the case on Twitter, I can't remember who it was, that we, another whiff here, why was it four guys? Why didn't we have a woman in there? In this, you know, six million people watching this. Why couldn't we bring, you know, some amazing celebrity or bring Condoleezza Rice into that? She can play the game. Let her be Tiger's, you know, partner or Phil's partner and, you know, shake it up and have fun. That, I mean, we can argue that was a whiff, but you can't, you know, it's hard to make it perfect. You know, we can easily, you know, we can easily be armchair quarterbacks here, but I, I like what, Har I, I like that at least Harvey brought this to uh, our attention so that, we're talking about it and can learn from it and do better next time because who knows what the next, you know, the tournaments are going to be like, what is the PGA championship going to be like? What's the Ryder cup going to be like the U S open, the masters. And you know, the, the case now to mic up all the players, you know, that's, that's getting a lot of attention right now to just have the mic going all the time, which I'm sure a lot of players would be against uh, that. But uh, um, yeah. So anyway, I think overall the net was incredibly positive and, and to Harvey's point, we can, we can learn from some of the mistakes or some of the uh, opportunities that, that we didn't uh, grab hold of and, and how it was executed. But, um, but anyway, let's go. So before we bring Alyssa on, I want to, the, the last topic I want to talk about, unless you got something else on your mind, Don, is, is just to remind folks that the house of representatives passed uh, a, a pretty short bill, but that um, amends the uh, PPP program um, you know, in, in the sense of it uh, provides more time for small businesses to use their funds from eight weeks to 24 weeks to spend the loan, gives uh, businesses more choice in how they use the funds. So it doesn't have to be the 75% threshold on, on payroll um, and uh, extends loan payback period from two to five years. Some, some nice amendments to it. The Senate apparently, according to Ronnie Miles on our team, our director of advocacy, the Senate has a similar bill but hasn't scheduled a vote uh, as, as far as the, uh, as of yesterday, they hadn't scheduled a vote on the Senate version of the same bill, you know, so, and, and there's also 135 billion left in the, in the fund still to, to pay out, which I found was interesting that there was this, this clamor and race to get it. And then here we are, you know, several weeks later now, and there's still $135 billion left in the coffers. But, you know, you know, what made, what's on my mind about this is, you know, as the economy opens, as President Trump and others push open the economy, open the economy, open the economy, does that relieve Congress or Washington from having to act on additional relief? You know, it's like, is there, is there a, I, I would say there's a strategy to that because we still have a lot, you know, the economy is hurting. Look at, look at the depressing effect that we're having on the economy. But as we open, will Congress not be in a hurry? Will the Senate not be in a hurry to pass legislation because, hey, folks, we're opening back up. Are we going to need the, the, uh, the relief? What, what do you think, Don? What do you, what do you, what is your, uh, uh, your looking glass say on this? My looking glass, oh my goodness. Um, well, one, I think some of those changes are really gonna help all, everybody on the East Coast. I mean, out here on the West Coast, we had reopened. So the timing of the check that I got on May 1, knowing that I have eight weeks by the end of June 30th to do it, it's actually gonna work out all right for me. You know, I built my spreadsheet, I'm plugging in my utility numbers, I'm plugging in my payroll numbers. I've, I've added a bunch of people to uh, get my head count there. I've already given um, a lot of employees $500 stimulus checks in order to get my 75%. And so I'm really trying to do um, justice to what that PPP bill was, was to give people their jobs back, give them a little extra money in their, their pocket and, and to make sure that we can get back to normal. Now I'm in the summer, but I'm still going to do that because I know that's what the money was intended for. Now, if they're going to extend those deadlines of two years to five years or to the end of the year to pay it back or down to 60% on the payroll, um, that's great if it makes it easier for everybody um, to abide by it. And, you know, you just hope that everybody's going to do it right. I, I mean, this money is to go back to the employees who lost their jobs. I mean, I did a spreadsheet of what hours was worked by every employee from the middle of January to the middle of March, how many hours they worked, and then how many hours they worked from the middle of March to the middle of May, because I just wanted to see what was the impact. So when I write them a stimulus check from the PPP money, um, then it'll be based on how many hours they worked. And that's just one calculation. You have to come up with your own. But I know when I just gave the agronomy crew, all of them 500 extra dollars, they were very happy. And I didn't call it any kind of pay, except this is a bonus for just for being here, right? And, and I think if we do that, then maybe the sting of the unemployment and people not wanting to come back to work will, will go away. 
Now, as far as, you know, will the Congress and, and will they approve something if the economy gets better? I don't know. I mean, we made it, you know, there was a lot of bogeys because of COVID. Uh, March will never, I'll never get March back and I'll never get April back. But PPP is going to make sure that I'll live to see another March and I'll live to see another April. And for that, I'm very grateful of our, of our country that has the money to do stuff like that. So I hope Congress understands there's still people hurting. Maybe there's some sunlight hitting parts of the United States, but some are still in the dark and they're scared. And so, uh, you know, if you still haven't asked for your PPP money, go ahead and get it. You can always give it back. You can always pay it back if it turns out you don't need it. Um, but apply for it because if you give it to your staffs, that's what it's intended for. And that'll just, that'll change the morale of a country, which I think leads to a better economy. Yeah, speaking of which, you know, the purpose being for the employees, you know, segue to a question here that came in from uh, the audience that any more news on, on PPP for the 501c7s or other C, you know, uh, nonprofits and and the bill that we're talking about now is does not do that. That makes amendments to the the PPP program that's already underway. The Heroes Act that was passed by the House that was to remedy the uh, nonprofit question. Which you know again the case that we're trying to make here is the 2,000 plus private clubs organized under 501c7. Why should they be ineligible for the payment you know payroll protection money? when that money is meant for the waiters, the waitresses, the staff to protect them, that's really what this is about. So who cares if the waiter works at the local restaurant or the club, it's the same situation. And so the house passed it, which was great news, but you know, none of us know what's gonna happen with the Senate and which provisions that they'll take from the house bill and, and preserve. Um, but there's a, been a lot of effort in, from the nonprofit world to expand and make sure all, all types of nonprofits are at least eligible for the program. So, so that's good news that at least the House bill had that in it. We'll see what survives. Another question uh, from the audience here is, have you guys heard of anything about the use of rakes, benches, ball washers, et cetera? Just wondering, thanks for doing these. You're welcome. So, um, you know, I, I, Don, have you seen people putting this stuff back into play? You know, taking the covers off the ball washers, putting the rakes back and all of that? Uh, you know, I think that's a great question for Accelerate. So whoever posed that question, get on the NGCOA Accelerate platform, put that out there and see who's made, who's gone back to some previous behaviors. But Don, have you heard of any of your fellow operators bringing some of that stuff back into play? Out here, I have not. You know, and like, once again, we're, we're ahead of everybody else in the United States as far as what we're dealing with. And everybody's kind of kept it there I, 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 to where we're at. I, you know, I think Man, I don't see ball washers ever coming back, to be quite honest with you. I mean, why? You know, people can clean their own ball. I mean, I could put ball washers on the carts if I really, really thought it was important. Um, water on the golf course, I don't think that's ever coming back. I can't control that spigot. That spigot gets touched by everybody. Um, you know, flag sticks and things like this. We're going to have a Southwest section event here next Monday. And we're going to give everybody who's playing a little bottle of sanitizer solution and just say, listen, touch the flags, touch the rakes, touch all the stuff that you want to touch. But then grab that sanitizer and put it on your hands before you get in your cart. Put it in your pocket while you're playing today. And I want you to use it every time you touch something that could make you feel uncomfortable or somebody else uncomfortable. So I think that could be the new norm. I think uh, golf shops will be selling sanitizer, little bottles in their shops. And if you're high end, you might be giving it away to everybody so that everybody's got something to clean their hands during their round. That might make it easier for ball washers and and rakes and flag sticks and stuff so like that. All those Arizona golf courses with the misters, you know, they have the water. There's going to be just misting Purell, you know, out there on the golf course. Be <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a question yeah. here, Don, uh, a follow-up to your bonus, the, the bonus checks. I know there, I, I know there was a, an Arizona NGCOA webinar in this, but uh, the question was, do we need to be careful that a bonus like this wasn't in place before COVID and won't be forgivable? Are, are they getting that granular as far as bonus versus payroll, you know, like a normal paycheck or hourly wage and so forth, or is it level of pay this year versus level, you know, dollar amount versus dollar amount? Yeah, you know, that seminar was really good and, and it was Grandy and Associates. It was awesome. Um, the way they addressed it is they said they necessarily, why not call it hazard pay? Because if there's some hazard in the future, are you going to do the same when that hazard comes and how do you define a hazard? So um, their advice was just to call it a, a bonus check, you know, a, a commission check of some type. And, you know, you really don't have to label it. Um, I did not a, a, a associate it with hours worked. I didn't associate it with how much they made. It was just like, here's 500. Now, like I said, you could call it hazard pay. You could call it just thank you. Um, you know, um, but I think as long as, and I'm no expert, I just am watching seminars to be as smart as I possibly can. I think you're going to be okay to get, I know you can get bonuses and be okay on PPP. That's a fact. You can do it. Now, what you call it, 
could you set a precedent and cause yourself some issues down the road? Right. Maybe. So that's why I'm just not calling right. anything. I'm just calling an extra 500. So, you know, I know Ronnie Miles is listening here. I'm going to give him another to do. Ronnie, you know, maybe you can dissect this one, provide a little bit of guidance for our members and put something out on Accelerate on just the issue of, of how you can spend the PPP money on payroll bonuses, thank you pay. And I, even though, even, like even when your staffing level has, has shrunk, uh, you know, temporarily, you can still keep your level of funding, you know, as though you were fully staffed and be able to use those funds. And so maybe Ronnie, you know, get into the granular detail of this in an accelerate post, uh, just to give everybody a little reassurance on-, on Can I no say one thing, Jay, on that? Is, I thought this was really good out of the seminar. There's two ways to kind of figure out your FTEs. And Ronnie, correct me if I'm wrong, but the two ways to figure out the FTEs, you could make it a percentage. Hey, they work 30 hours, 30 hours of a 40 hour week is a 0.75 FTE. Or you could just call them either half or full. So if somebody worked five hours in a week, you could just call them a 0.5 employee. But the way he explained it in the seminars, when you fill out your application, your forgiveness application, pick one of those two and stick with it. So for me, I'm not giving everybody a lot of hours. I'm trying to bring back those young kids who clean carts. And so they're all going to be 0.5s to me. And anybody who's full-time is going to be one. And that's how I'm going to get my head count to my FTEs to be higher than they, as high as they were pre-COVID. So that's what I'm doing. Ronnie, if I'm wrong, please correct me so I don't mess anybody up in the United States. Right now. <laughs> I, know, I know he will. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll put something out. So yeah, we'll get something out on Accelerate, folks. All right. So the last 15 minutes or so here, we're going to bring on our special guest. We have Alyssa Godet. Uh, come on, come on into the show, Alyssa. Talking about walk-up music. <laughs> Master promoter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There you go, John. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. Welcome to Golf Business Live, Alyssa. It's good to see you. Uh, you know, we've known each other for a number of years. Um, you know, as as you've launched this program a number of years ago. Congratulations on its success and. You know, for those at home, Alyssa won the NGCOA Champion Award a couple of years ago for, for basically launching and making this a reality and keeping it alive. We've had a lot of discussions, I know, about keeping it alive and moving and keeping the momentum going on this. And you've done a, a wonderful job with that. And, you know, so we brought you on the show to kind of let us know and let the folks at home know here. Uh, tell us about 2020. What's, what's different? What's new? What would you like folks to know about Women's Golf Day? the numbers, the events, because I know we've got two events going on this year instead of one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, talk to us. Thank you. First of all, great to be on here and uh, see people. <laughs> I'm, uh, I've been, I live in Florida in West Palm, so I was in the home lockdown with a Chewini for the past couple months. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's all good. I'm glad to see that things are getting back to normal. Um, obviously, I've been listening I thought the match was great. I don't think we necessarily had to um, have women on that. I'm a diehard Pats fan, but I'm converting to Tampa Bay now with uh, Brady and Gronk. So I've already you're got not a Pats fan. You're a Brady fan is what you're saying. I'm a Brady fan. <laughs> and now with Gronk, was that was just like, okay, I already got the shirt. So I'm in. And um, I think that there's such a rivalry. Like the one had died down between um, – you know, wouldn't that match have been great, like, maybe 10 years ago? Like, mm -hmm. when Peyton was still playing. And But point being is, they were two big rivals, all four, in my mind, goats. So that was appropriate. And I think they did a really good job. You know, I mean, we've got to give people a little bit of slack. Are they going to high-five, stand too close during the check? Come on, peeps. I mean, everybody's trying their best. I'm sure that they uh, wash their hands after that. So <laughs> I'm going to give them a pass on that and say bravo. Um, bravo for getting creative. Yeah. Um, Women's Golf Day. So we had to do the same as everybody else. June was a little too, uh, a lot of places closed. I've been talking to all of our partners. Um, I think as a lot of you know, with everything from Top Golf and PGA Tour Superstore that are closed, but Club Corps and Troons and everywhere around the world um, all have different scenarios. So we moved our normal events date to September 1st. And that's going to also be if your location allows events to happen, then we would love for you to host a Women's Golf Day event. I think we're in a unique positive position because these are smaller regional events. People don't necessarily travel to get there. And as long as I think the golf course is doing a lot of the things that Don said, I don't see why this couldn't be done in a, a safe fashion. You know, they can limit the number, 
you know, because we have the first two hours, people either take the lessons or they play the nine holes. So that's uh, September. And so what we did is decided to, to convert the uh, original first Tuesday in June date to a virtual women's golf day, digital celebration. So historically, our social media has been, at least last year, we had uh, 47 million people engaging the week of women's golf day and 25 million actively engaging online on women's golf day. So while we've never had like a ton of traffic to our website, that was huge. So the team was like, Hey, why don't we do a digital day? You know, while everybody else is <laughs> furloughing and going down, we went the opposite way and we are not a technology company and we certainly are not, a, not a, a, a Red Cross charity. Mm -hmm. But we went with our pillars, which are engage, empower, support. So on this day, um, on June 2nd, uh, for 24 hours, starting in Australia, we will have people engaging on social media. There's ways you can do it. We're working with the RNA. They have a hashtag golf at home. We have our challenge, which is, you know, you say your name, where you're from, you catch a golf ball, say one thing positive, either about staying home or about golf, and you toss it off the screen. It's super simple. Um, so that's the social media. Then we've got videos and the industry, you know, as we, why a lot of us know and love about the industry when, when it is time to pull together, we pull together. And I am in awe from USGA, RNA, Jack and Barbara Nicholas have a message that's on our website right now. So we have 48 videos from young, old, everywhere around the world. People sent in videos, some are instructional, inspirational, um, golfers, Lisa Guerrero from Inside Edition, all kinds of people. So that'll be fun. And then the third component is uh, our Engage and Power Support is we did a we're doing a charity auction for Doctors Without Borders. So Women's Golf Day is in 52 countries and Doctors Without Borders is in 70. So this seems like a really good fit and the money is going to their COVID-19 efforts. So since we're, you know, we don't know where people are coming from or doing, we felt like this lined up. So that's live. I would love for people to go there, 32auctions.com backslash WGD Unites. And again, in spades, uh, Bears Club, Pinehurst, uh, Beth Page. Wow. Fun Beach Part 3. <laughs> uh, Side <laughs> memorabilia. Um, golf bags, all kinds of stuff. That's great. Um, and what is it? Tell everybody the website of uh, the event itself, your website. So that, that's a home base for everything. Yeah, it's a women's golf day. Let's see if we have it. Women'sgolfday.com. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Women'sgolfday.com. And it, right when you go on the homepage, it says virtual. You hit on that. And we really tried to really make it simple. So it says engage social media, empower the videos. You'll see Jack and Barbara there, and then support. Um, and it has a charity, it is a link. So whichever, you know, whatever you're feeling like, but I highly encourage people to check out the auction items or raise some money for a much needed cause. Um, everybody coming together feels good. We've always been a kind of light, happy, fun, feel good entry to the golf industry. So that's what we're encouraging. But I mean, this is men and women. So, you know, throw on some red sunglasses, a red wig, some boas, golf at home, take some videos, have some fun and engage. Uh, a couple of people are going live. Cheyenne Woods with Troon is going live on that day. Um, Haley Ledbetter, Michelle Wee, and Kira, I think Dixon, are all going to go live. And we'll post that. So our social media is going to push people to like, hey, watch the history of the RNA, you know, women in golf from the RNA, or Jan Beljan talking about architecture. We did our best in a short amount of time to you know, really cover as many bases as we could. So um, it sounds like it's gonna be a very robust day for a digital event. Um, let me ask you, I'm gonna ask you an existential question about Women's Golf Day. So is this one of those things that if you're successful or with the crusade that you're on and many are on to have, you know, women involved in golf, maybe as, as much as, as men, that you, there would not be a need for Women's Golf Day at some point, you know, because there, that's kind of the, the irony of this. And but it feels like a celebration of it, but at the same mm -hmm. time, we feel like we're still on a crusade. And then if the crusade is, will the crusade ever be over? And will there be no need for something like this one day? Is that kind of like the dream? To put yourself um, out of business? Yeah. <laughs> nope, the dream is go big. And the dream is New York Marathon, same thing. 
uh, you know, it's the same. Like, are there people, runners still going to run? Yeah. So we're like the New York Marathon inverted. Instead of everybody coming to us for one day, we go to them. And it's just a giant birthday party. The birthday party doesn't end. If more women golf, if, you know, in our food, be wonderful, you know, for us financially, just makes smart business sense. More women play golf or what have you. Oh, we're still going to have a birthday party. Like, our, like I said, it's light, fun, feel good. And I think this, the intimidation is not necessarily a crusade. What I found and through all this research and having doing this five years, and I mean, I'm talking to people all Dubai, wherever. I, I just don't, for whatever reason, the resources aren't there. And I, listen, our industry is, trust me, after doing this too, um, I'm on four hours of sleep per night for, I don't know, it's been a week or two now. Um, we don't have one Roger Goodell, you know? It's difficult, it's really difficult, you know? To get like this, we really found in this. I mean, we're pulling everybody together and I understand everybody's gotta look out for themselves, you know, each governing body, each organization, but it's really, it's not as easy as something like NFL, NBA, MLB, or, or FIFA for that matter. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You are right. You're speaking my language. That's that's the, you know, the <laughs> alphabet soup of associations in golf. But, you know, there was there was a meeting uh, I don't know, a year or two ago when someone from the PGA of America was was uh, sharing their um, American development model, and and you know we're we're talking with other sports under the U.S. Olympic banner, and and the other sport sporting uh, governing bodies were saying to the PGA guy, "Man, you guys are so lucky that you have you know four or five you know, formidable, resourceful organizations supporting golf. And it's funny because it's like the feeling sometimes is, yeah, but we have four or five organizations, you know, supporting the game, trying to move things forward. And sometimes that, you know, facilitates uh, some challenges, you know, but, but I, I'll say this, this COVID, this year has seen the golf industry come together like never before. And so my hope is that we, we look, you know, we're, we're looking for what do we learn from all of this? I'm hoping that that got our muscles going and our brains going and how really to work together as an industry. So hopefully, Alyssa, in the future, you know, that we'll be acting more as one. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I guess I was like a long-winded way to say also too, like this is something that brings everybody together. For one, it doesn't step on any toes. It's one day. So all those organizations get to participate. And that's why I don't think it would go away. And um, I'm reading the uh, Q and A's that are coming in. So I'm gonna give a verbal shout out to the Latina golfers in Southern California, great organization going to precisely what we're saying. I just think it's like at least one day where, you know, we get all these different organizations and it allows people to at least find their space. So whether that's, you know, get golf ready or go into a PGA teaching pro or a Latina golfers or black girls golf or adaptive golfers or, private country club, whatever floats your boat. We're just hoping that it kind of like throws everybody into the pot for one day and kumbaya, yeah. had some fun. Well, let me ask you this. If you had, you know, if you could tell a golf course operator like Don, like, okay, this is the ideal thing you can do in September when we've got the live event. This is the model golf course operator and how they support Women's Golf Day. What does that look like? Um, Golf course operator, just one one location. Yeah, if you were telling, if you had, you know, Don's, if you if Don said, listen, I want to be the poster child for Women's Golf Day out here in Arizona. If I was to do ex exactly what you'd want me to do, uh, what would that look like? So that you know, more, you know, my goal here is that thousands of golf course operators will will hear the message here and and hear hear what you have to say. What should they be doing? In okay, yeah, and that is, I'm assuming, besides that, he gets this logo to his calf like um, Phil Mickelson has. Of course. Already done. Because <laughs> we know the calves are always in showing. Um, no, in seriousness. So what I would say is you got to, we got, you've got, I would say, number one, sign up and have your location participate. On that, what people don't realize, so now we've got over 900 locations in 52 countries on that website database. So wherever you live, you live in Arizona, Minnesota, if you, some lady is looking for, go, you know, women, golf for women, more than likely our site's going to pop up first. On our site, when you sign up, which is free, just register because of the COVID, we waived all the fees. And that's for the September event coming up. You have a place to put a video. You can put pictures. You can put all kinds of things like we have junior clinics. We do uh, weddings. You There's tons of information that you can put there. So that's like, then you're doing it. So then you host the event. 
we've got we've heard so many amazing stories so if you're a private club and you quietly want to look for new members you have your women members you allow them to invite a non-member and it has worked we have gotten the test we got back i can tell you clubs and they've told me how many they've increased um if you're semi say you open it up for the day you even look more hero hey listen first 50 you want to create buzz first 50 first 100 you do it Listen, Olympic Club, Liberty, those guys were charging their members. They're, they're serving champagne. They're bringing in a speaker, making money all day long. This is, mm-hmm. you know, this is like old school Tupperware. I'm going to date myself and Mary Kay. Because it's like, it's like a licensing deal. It's your own mini business for the day. It can be as marvelous as you want. And the lady that comes there, whether if you have like, a, let's just say a semi, right? You're taking events because a lot of money made in events. And even though people can't really gather, it's not going to go away. That's one thing that doesn't go away even in a down economy. People are still going to celebrate 50th anniversaries, weddings, you know, all kinds of birthdays, all kinds of things like that. So this woman shows up to your place. And while we'd love her to be a golfer, I am acutely aware that if she decides to host her daughter's wedding, it's a lot better off for you than if she played around to golf every day for 365 days. Right. I can pretty almost, I don't have the exact numbers, but. Yeah. Well, that's a, it's an economic stimulus opportunity is what you're saying, right? <laughs> it is, but there's a lot of ways that even if the women that are coming there that may not be converted, you know, like that's the one thing that we're not like there's, you know, LPGA is professional golf, LET, that's professional golf. And there's organizations that encourage women, but we're not like, go be the league play. If you want to play twice a year and play nine and wine, we think that's absolutely fabulous. If you want to play global. That's fabulous. Right. We just, everybody, no judgment, but we are aware that there's a lot of economic impact. If you are like kindly go, Hey, listen, you only want to play twice a year, but you have a corporate event or you have a wedding or you have a, that same person or you, you know, or CFO and you need to, you're having your, you realize it's a good idea for McKinsey or, or, you know, mm-hmm. whomever to, to come in and be a member or bring your, and not necessarily women, women and men. It's just, yeah conduit and, and it's a no-brainer about juniors i don't even think i need to mention that because that's the high high so even if the woman comes and she doesn't play but she at least feels good we just have to eradicate golf widow yeah. if we eradicate that we have a lot more business oh that's, that's a good phrase i like that she brings the kids we are in good shape it's another win yeah i, I dig that that's great eliminate the golf widow i like that don what, what questions do you have for our our, our esteemed guest today well, I just want to piggyback on what, I mean, she's a powerhouse, right? Alyssa's always, always has been. And listen, I mean, uh, you're waiving the fees, but for seventy nine ninety nine, you can be a, an annual member of her page. I mean, $7 a month, you don't want to tap into some kind of database. We all know there's a fertile field out there that we got to plant some seeds in. She is acquiring these databases. She's acquiring a lot of eyes. And, and every all of us know that, advertising is very expensive and it and and so why wouldn't you go to the website and pay the 79.99 to be an annual member or bump up to the other one and i'm not just saying this because i think she does amazing things it's because it's a smart business to do and and be involved with the virtual day be involved with september but i'll tell you this the ladies who already play here notice the fact that i've always supported women's golf day and they're happy and they're proud that i did it because i'm actually doing what i say i want to do Instead of saying, oh, we welcome women, and then I'm overly nice to them, so it's so inauthentic. They think I'm just faking it. They know when you're faking it. Women know it more than anything. So do what you're supposed to do, which invite this game of golf to everybody. And if you can't afford anything, you can afford $80, $7 a month to support something that is really um, – there is no barriers. There's no, state, there's no state boundaries. There's no global boundaries. She's pretty much got all these countries going. So I just think it's silly if you're not on that website right now. Go sign up right now. And we on the directory. all the time because people go cruise yeah. around. So like, you know, Sally's sitting there and her sister lives in Poland and she's like, and she's Polish descent. And she's like, oh my God, do you know there's five courses in Poland? You should, I mean, that's how information is traveling these days. So yeah, you don't know where it's going to come from. And yeah, I highly recommend. And yeah, listen, WGD Unites is the code for free for the uh, basic package. So if somebody wants hey, well, to- I didn't on, hear that two days ago. I mean, wait, wait a second. I, I procrastinated a little bit, but I guess I should have procrastinated two more days and I'd have got it for free. <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, you know, it's worth $80. So, uh, you know, whether you use the promo code or not, I know that money's going to go to good use. So whatever anybody wants to do. But 
I just applaud you. You are a champion for a reason for the NGCOA award and just keep doing it because you've hit some walls and you don't even care. You just climb right over them. It's amazing. Yeah. So if you want to hitch a wagon to somebody, I would hitch it to women's golf day. They will give you exposure. And I'm not just saying that's because I've seen it happen and I'm just a little par 61 in East Mason. You got to do it. Well, Hey, listen, the, Thanks, I, I, I can't top that. I just, I know you're a one woman powerhouse and I, I, I can confidently say that no other initiative in golf keeps the light shining on this quite like yours, you know, even though it's a one day or two day event, it's, it's just, there's nothing that, that matches it, you know? And so, you know, I congratulate you and uh, we'll continue to be supporters and we're, we're coming on the, the, uh, the final moments here in the show. So Alyssa, thank you for, for, being with us, best of luck yeah, with the digital th and real person, you know, real live in-person event in September. Happy to help with that. And uh, Don, it's always good to see you as well. Uh, everybody, you know, thank you for joining us today. And uh, you know, have a wonderful week. And we'll see you same bat channel, same bat time next week on golf. Thank Business you, Tour. NGCOA. Thank you guys You're for welcome. doing this and keeping everybody engaged. We're doing our best, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Have a good week.